India's market news headquarters. Cutting edge analysis. Influential insights. Market moving intelligence. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswald Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live as always from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Roosevelt Studios. And I think today I can say TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Last Friday one could not say it because Saturday was working. But today, of course, you go into a weekend. And what a way to go into the weekend if there is follow through from yesterday's session, right? I mean, I think that's the talking point. Can the market sustain what we've begun yesterday, broken out of this consolidatory pattern? that we've been in for the last many weeks. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues, Sonia and Nigel. Guys, good morning. Hi, good morning, Prashant. Good, good morning. morning, Nigel. And it's what, a thousand point rally that the market has seen in eight trading sessions, mm. right? So phenomenal move, sitting at record highs. But this morning, I think the global uh, markets may spoil the party a little bit. But be that as it may, this has been an out and out buy on this market. Well, that's right. The US markets couldn't keep up overnight, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, this weekend is something that you're particularly looking forward to because next week you get into the final week of earnings. Yeah. of FY24 uh, earnings, so it's been quite exhausting. We've got yeah. five more sessions and then we are done with it. And about 30 companies to talk to in between uh, from now on. <laughs> <laughs> maybe more than that. All right, well, you know, let's just take a quick look at what you need to know as we begin another session. Yesterday was a mix. It was a mix, it was a powerful mix of two things. Uh, you know, very strong buying in the cash market from FII's, plus, as data showed later in the evening, there was a lot of short covering as far as index futures are concerned. Uh, and I uh, put the data up uh, for you. So FII's bought about 4670 crores in the cash market. And in the futures market, they cut uh, their short positions. They'd been net short on Wednesday to the tune of about 2.2 lakh contracts. That number fell by over 1 lakh contracts. So they cut shots by, of over 1 lakh contracts. And that number is now about 0 0.98, 98,000 basically. Uh, uh, sort of uh, contracts short, right? So that is a lot of short covering which played through in a single day. Now, you know, the, the point is if you go back and look at this data over the last one and a half years or so, and I've only looked at the recent sort of data which is the last uh, uh, year and a half, once, you know, from extreme levels, and we still at 2.2 2 lakh contracts, net shorts, FIIs, we, we are still not at the absolute extreme lows. Uh, you know uh, the the the, low, the highest that they've had on the on the short side, but at cert th this of course is at one extreme. So from an extreme, when the short covering starts and a powerful short covering like this starts, what we've seen in the previous uh, at least two instances that I saw is that this could continue all the way that shots are covered and then you actually you go long, uh, and uh, you know that uh, you you breach a bit of an extreme on the long side as well. Now this has happened of course right before the election results. So it kind of makes this setup all the more interesting. What I'm saying actually could very well play out depending on, of course, the election results or like what we saw yesterday, what we've had is basically the beginning of this election rally, the market sensing that there perhaps is going to be political continuity, etc. You know, I've been saying this, markets typically get the direction of the election result right. Broadly, the direction of the election result right. And I think that confidence is starting to build in. So keep, keep an eye out on this one. From an extreme position, when covering starts, it could take you all the way into, into zero. And then, I mean, a bit of an extreme on the upside as well, on the long side as well. Uh, now, uh, you know, overnight, as uh, you know, we've been discussing, the queues were a little sort of softish. Dow was down one and a half, S&P down three quarters, NASDAQ is down about a third of a percent. But almost immediately, I want to also contrast uh, something which is of importance. To put this in context, year to date, the NASDAQ is up 13 percent. We are up five and a half percent. The reason I'm co uh, sort of contrasting Nifty with the Nasdaq is because these are, along with I think the Taiwanese market, uh, they're some of the most tightly, co they have been the most tightly correlated markets for the last three, three and a half years now. Uh, so when you look at day on day dips in the US, you've got to also keep in mind that the market has obviously done much better than what we've done here. Uh, now, uh, you know, just a, a few sort of run through on rates, dollar, etc. Rates went up, uh, the yield went up by about five basis points. Dollar index was over 105. It ended over 105, so but not very much. By not very much. Data is basically what uh, you know uh, pushed yields higher and the dollar higher. So jobless claims were lower, and the US PMI, uh, PMIs 
which is which was also nuanced, but broadly they beat expectations. On the services side, the labor component is weak. For the second straight uh, sort of month in a row, that number is under 50. And services inflation is sticky. So I think there is a nuance here, but for you know our purposes, when we're looking at day-to-day, -day, this was redder, uh, slightly hawkish. Now, oil prices, they continue to drop. This week has been good. If you're looking for oil prices to drop, we are now at about 80, 81 and a half or dollars per barrel mark. Uh, so that's basically the setup as far as uh, global queues are concerned. Equities were lower, but I mean, I wouldn't read too much into it in that sense. There is one more thing, uh, and I think you, you would have seen headlines from global media, etc. China conducting large-scale military drills near Taiwan. Of course, I mean, it's been China's long-standing uh, stance that Taiwan is a part of China, and uh, any calls for independence, etc., there are moot. That's their uh, sort of point of view. These are, of course, military drills, which are planned, and large-scale military drills, which are planned around Taiwan, which is, of course, being closely watched. Now, uh, just to come back and circle back to levels here, Nifty decisively closed above yesterday the previous high, which is 22,794. That's point number one. And we've been saying, right, line of sight to an all-time high. It happened yesterday. Uh, the trend line resistance is at 23,125. You basically connect the uh, earlier highs and sort of extend that uh, line up, and that, uh, that meets the Nifty at about 23,125. That's the immediate first level to watch out for. Supports come in at the 20-day, which is 22,420. Bank Nifty has outperformed yesterday. It broke above the previous high. Of course, on the back of that, our big RBI dividend, the cool-off in yields the day before, we were highlighting how banks perhaps could have a bit of a positive day. Continuing from, by the way, you know, uh, on the RBI announcement day, the market had already responded. Bank Nifty had recovered quite a bit from the day's low, so that continued in a big way with that 2% pop. Closing above 48,832 will be open up the line of sight to the new high there, which, of course, is around the 50,000 mark, just under the 50,000 mark. And support on the Nifty Bank is the 20-day, which stands at 48,298. So that's essentially the picture. It's not a very... I mean, Asia is down and US is down, etc. But I think we've been sort of falling because of our own issues and, of course, the fear around elections and emerging market flows, etc. being negative. Could that turn at the margin? I think that's all that you would need. The gift nifty is indicating a slightly lower start, about 25 points. Sonia. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think this market is an out-and-out -out, uh, bull market, a buy-on-dips market, yeah. right? That strategy has worked every time, yeah. even in the month of May, if you look at it, right, from the lows that we saw in the month of May. In fact, the Nifty is now, uh, what, has climbed about over 1,000 points in the last eight trading sessions. We'll talk about that. But yesterday, you saw both foreign and domestic investors buy in the cash market, so which is a very good thing. FI has bought in huge quantities, almost 5,000 crores. DI has bought about 150-odd crores. And yes, the uh, U.S. markets were under pressure overnight, but the important bit is that our own markets have been playing catch-up to the U.S. markets and the rally that we've seen. In fact, NVIDIA, post those very strong numbers, uh, was the big mover in trade overnight as well. So, as I said, it's a big rally that we've seen in the last 8-9 trading sessions. Even if there is a dip because of global queues, that could get bought into. Uh, there are lots of things working in our favor, whether it is the expectation of policy continuity post the elections, whether it is positive global queues, whether it's good earnings, the pickup that we've seen across several sectors. So, two stocks that I'm looking at this morning, one of them is Interglobe Aviation. It's the sixth consecutive quarter of profitability that the company has reported. And, uh, you know, a lot of brokerages bullish on the stock. In fact, Morgan Stanley has uh, titled their report Indigo 2.0 and they speak about how this stock is the cheapest uh, as far as valuations in the travel and tourism sector. They've raised their target price to 5,142 on Interglobe Aviation. So big upside despite the rally that we've already seen. The other one is Honasa Consumer. Uh, very good numbers coming through. Strong growth, much higher than the industry. It was a 27% volume growth that Honasa has seen. They've reported a profit uh, of 30 crores. So it's a turnaround quarter for them compared to a loss last year. So my eye will be squarely on that stock. And uh, banks, banks are coming back as well. We are seeing the first signs of delivery-based buying, especially in the large private sector banks. So just keep an eye out on whether banks assume leadership in the next leg of this run-up. So that's the big question that we're asking. So overall, record highs for the market. Yes, some, you know, trepidation here and there, but otherwise it's been a trending up market. Well, that's right, Sonia. You know, it's quite ironic. Yesterday, if you asked many people about their portfolios, they said, my portfolio didn't move much. Because most of the portfolio, as, as of now, are towards the mid-cap names. And mm -hmm. yesterday was the day of the large that cap is. names, the frontline Nifty and the Nifty bank stocks. And what took place? It was a massive short covering bounce that we saw. The Nifty, there was some fresh long addition. But on the Nifty bank, you know, you had open interest that was down by close to around 4%, telling you that there was a bounce that played out. And pull out the FI data. What do the FIs do in the FNO market? Just take a look at that. That's a swing factor of more than a lakh contracts. 
because they covered 35,000 shots, they added close to 86,000 long positions, and now the short positions have come down to around 58%. A few sessions ago, it was at around 72%. And in absolute terms, you know, the short positioning got cut in half in a single trading session. That's the power of short covering, right? You had close to 2.2 lakh contracts at the start of the trading session on the short side from the FIs. They got sliced into half, less than one lakh contracts. Or so big short covering bounce is what played out yesterday. The options data. Now, these strikes, they'll expire in the coming, uh, uh, coming Thursday, which will also be the monthly expiry. So we had good amount of put trading, more than 70 lakh shares getting added out there between both these two. 22,800 put, 22,700 put. And between them, there was a fair bit of open interest built up, which brings us to the levels. Going by the options data, going by the recent resistance level, that, in fact, becomes a bit of a support zone. And because of the put writing that we've seen, now the PCR has moved to around 1.37, but it peaks out at around 1.65 volts. So we have some distance to go on the upside. That's a support zone, which earlier was a resistance zone. So that's the crucial mark out there. If you're going long, you're buying the dip. Well, this is the level you don't want to get violated on the downside. The Nifty Bank, yes, it took out the 50 DMA, it took out the 20 DMA. It was on its way to around that, uh, you know, 49,000 odd mark. So the reference point on the downside will be the 20 DMA, which it, you know, faced a couple of hurdles out there. And fresh all-time highs could be on the cards. The Nifty Bank is coming back into form, and that's the one that could drive us higher. What are the stocks that I'm looking at? I'm looking at two stocks from the FNO pack, first of all. Two stocks that come out of the FNO band. Vodafone Ida, you have an UBS upgrade as well. So that's going to be important. Biocon as well has seen an interesting price action. Both those two should be on your radar. And from the cash market, IMFA, you know, I'm tracking that stock because yesterday it did see a sharp correction eh, post its numbers. But the delivery number was much higher, closer to around 3.5 lakh shares, which compares with less than a lakh shares that we have seen on an average for the past month. And, you know, just going by the delivery data, there has been one large seller in there, which has been gradually selling. You know, if you just look at it from 6% over the last few quarters, it came down to around 1 lakh shares approximately. And going by yesterday's delivery data, it'll be interesting to see whether or not that got cleared out in trade yesterday. So one big seller getting out of the way is important. And fundamentally, well, the quarter four numbers, it appeared it was very big, but there were a couple of adjustments that they put post-market as. So that's one factor. The other factor is valuation-wise, it's more or less stable. Ferrochrome prices have been strong. So I'll be interested to see whether or not that stock can bounce back in some way. It ended at the 20 DMA. All right, thanks a lot for that. Well, on the equities front, we have a comment coming in from Rhythm Desai of Morgan Stanley, who says that a lot of foreign investors are waiting for India's headline multiples to decline before increasing their participation in Indian stocks. However, aside from any negative surprise out of the June elections, he sees no other triggers for a derating in the near term. Okay, so money market views here. On the rupee, we have Lakshman and V, a federal bank, who says that the US FOMC minutes indicated members are concerned over sticky inflation and the restrictive policy may be maintained at least until September. The Indian rupee inched up to its highest level in nearly six weeks due to likely intervention by the RBI and dollar sales from foreign banks. In the upcoming sessions, he expects the USD INR to trade in a range between 83.2 to 83.65 to the dollar. And on the bonds, Lakshmanan says the Indian 10-year bond yield declined to 11-month low, falling below the 7% mark after frequent buybacks by the RBI and surplus transfer of record 2.1 trillion to the central government for FY24. This may lead to a potential cut in the market borrowing. Foreign inflows amidst bond index inclusion program may aid to further softening of bond yields in the coming sessions. The 10-year benchmark bond yield could trade in a range of 6.9 to 7.05%. Well, we've got a lot of stock specification to track for you. We'll get to that in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. For the time being, we run you through the list. Interglobe, HCL Tech, Fortis Health, you have Hunasa, Bikashi Foods, JK Lakshmi Cement, CESC, Zagal Prepaid, UPL and RT Industrials. So we're expecting all 10 of them to open up with a positive tick. All right. Uh, well, that's basically what's coming up here in just a bit. Peter